The chairman of the Democratic National Committee is very angry with Senator Tom Cotton. He went after him for opposing Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's confirmation. Here it is. It shows you who this little uh, maggot infested man is. Uh, he does not deserve to have that pen. He doesn't deserve to be in the United States Senate representing the good people of Arkansas. Yeah, the RNC clapped back, calling those comments unhinged. A spokesperson said the smell of Democrat desperation is vile and sort of sad. Another said he has the message discipline of an angry toddler. Terrible political instincts. Senator Cotton has been under fire after he compared Jackson's record of defending Guantanamo Bay detainees to defending Nazi war criminals at Nuremberg. Cotton defended those comments on Fox News yesterday. So that is three cases in which she voluntarily advocated for the terrorists at Guantanamo Bay, in which she accused American soldiers of committing war crimes. I frankly have no patience for it. Power panel now, Richard Fowler, Fox News contributor, Sean Duffy, Fox News contributor, and former Republican Wisconsin congressman. Richard, I'll start with you and your top line thoughts. Well, listen, I'm not sure if I would use the same language that uh, DNC Chair Jamie Harrison used there, but I think it's worth pointing out that when it comes to her defense of Guantanamo detainees, there we go, um, it's very clear. She was a public defender. Her, she doesn't pick her cases. The system picks her cases for her. And then after that, her law firm happened to continue with these cases. And as a junior lawyer in that law firm, she wrote a brief. That's what the job of the defense table is, to write a brief and call into question the state's evidence. That's all she did here. And that's what a good lawyer is supposed to do. And in a couple minutes, she'll be a good Supreme Court attorney, uh, a good Supreme Court member when she's appointed to put on, be, be appointed to put on the court. So I just want to point out, you laid out two scenarios, one where she was with the federal government one where she was with a private law firm at least in one of those scenarios she could have said no to those cases it would be the second one Sean so Richard would never do what the DNC chair did right he's not going to call people a maggot because he's a no. professional and he knows that messaging actually works when you actually debate on issues Thanks, but you Sean. attack people personally that that never works right and I think it, it does show per the RNC that people are desperate when you have nothing to argue on could you talk about her fidelity to the to the Constitution? Could you talk about her storied legal history? If you can't do that, you call those who don't want to support her because they think she's a left-wing radical, you call them maggots, when you should actually debate on the facts. And I would ask the question, when those Democrat senators voted against Clarence Thomas, were they also maggots? I mean, I don't, I don't understand how this Ooh. game works, um, versus left, left versus right. Uh, I, you know, here, you know, Harris, I, I wouldn't go that far. I appreciate your, your comments, Sean, and I appreciate yeah. the fact that we can all agree that we're professionals here. But I, I think, look, if you watched the three days of this testimony very carefully, as I did, what you saw was a, a competent and qualified jurist talk about her jurisprudence, talk about how she agreed with Anton Scalia that the idea that the Constitution was dead, right? And beyond that, she talked about what it is to be a judge on the federal bench. And in a couple minutes from now, yeah. she will get a bipartisan vote that will put her on the Supreme Court of the United States, where for the first time in American history, we'll have a black woman. And for the first time in a long time, we'll have a defense attorney sitting on the bench. And for all the defense attorneys out there watching, they know how important it is to have somebody at the defense table sitting on the bench who could look at a case and say, hold up a second here, prosecutors. You're making well, some look, mistakes. No, nobody would argue that rep representation isn't important. But what, what Sean and others, and I, I'm putting words in your mouth, forgive me, Sean, because I've heard you say it. What many of us have said just as human beings is that, you know, it would have been amazing if the president had just put out a shingle. But instead, he put out a bolo, a be on the lookout for a black female. He could have made the same exact mm -hmm. decision that he's made, but imagine how many boats he would have lifted with that high tide. All right, let's move to this. Jamie Harrison also getting some attention saying this. It is a party built on fraud, fear, and fascism, and they don't deserve to be in power. And Not because Democrats should, but because they don't deserve to be in power of this great nation. Well, apparently Hillary Clinton was watching that and tweeted in agreement, sums it up. <laughs> Critics quick to tie it to that infamous campaign comment. There it is. Basket of deplorables to fascists in just a few short years. Another, such a classy woman. Can you believe voters rejected her? Sean Duffy. Well, you know what? It's, we're not that far away from the Trump economy where we actually had policies of free enterprise and freedom that actually made our economy grow and everyone was working and making more money. 
And I think right now when you don't have policies to run on, again, you can't run on the border, you can't run on crime, you can't run on inflation, you can't run on gas, uh, uh, gas uh, prices at the pump, you can't run on foreign policy, you resort to the fear tactics of saying, they're fascists, though. you, you got to keep us in our policies that don't maybe fit your pocketbook, but they're fascists, so don't vote for them. I mean, this is the most childish effort to try to get people to vote for you when people understand in their own lives that actually I might not have liked Donald Trump's tweets, but I loved his policies. They were amazing for me and my family. And I would rather have his tweets and those policies in that economy than this Joe Biden and the destruction that he's caused the American family. Well, and, and instead of all of that, you've got a bipartisan push now against the policy at the border, Title 42 being wiped yeah. away. Democrats on Capitol Hill are pointing the finger at oil executives now, and it happened during a combative hearing on gas prices yesterday. Here to get answers from the big oil companies about why they're ripping off the American people. We do not control the market price of crude oil or natural gas, and we have no tolerance for price gouging. There was another Democrat said that they want to have big oil hearings like they had big tobacco hearings. I think most of us would agree that this just doesn't, doesn't feel fair. It feels like gouging. We do not set the sales price of our products. Today is purely political. President Biden and the majority Democrats should accept responsibility. Democrats continuing to try to shield the Biden administration from blame for record high prices at the pump. But will voters who continue to list rising prices as their top concern right now buy these excuses come November? Richard, real quick, I'm lightning round here, Richard. <laughs> Sure. Listen, as a journalist, I'll tell you this. I think the Biden argument around the idea that it's Putin's gas price hike it, it's a non-starter and doesn't work. With that being said, to think that it's all because of Joe Biden that we have high gas prices is really looking at looking very terribly at a really more complicated situation. We are coming out of a global pandemic. There's a there's a high demand for fuel across the world. We also have one supplier, Russia, not being part of the world market. And as a result of many of these inputs, we have high gas prices in this country and around the world, for that matter. Well, and even if we could, you know, scoop up some of those oil leases that Saki and the president keep bragging about, um, we can't move some of that oil because we don't have enough pipeline to do that. Sean, quick round. Spot on, Harris. And it was a Democrat party that implemented and, and wants to pass the Green New Deal, which is an attack on uh, oil and gas in America. They want to shut down but that's pipelines. That's not impacting not the permits. prices, Sean. And when, no, hold on, hold on a second. When prices, go, when, when prices go up, they want to not blame themselves, not blame Bernie Sanders, AOC, and Joe Biden. They want to blame the energy executives. I mean, come on. Let's put the blame where it belongs in Democrat policies that want prices to what go up policy? so you buy a gas sipping car or an electric car. Well, when you shut down pipelines, don't get permits for pipelines. You can move energy Listen, across the Joe country. Joe Biden has given out more permits more in his first leases. year in office in well, Donald Leases that you have, but it doesn't speak to the fact I'll let you that it speak. takes a lot of time. I step in. We have breaking news right now, out. and and regardless of that, Richard, he let you talk. All right, we'll practice <laughs> relationships later. Thank you Back for being here. Harris.